get up here and talk about issues that are dealing with entertainment. But I've said this more and more on air. We need to do this because 20% or so of the propaganda and brainwashing is in newspapers and on the nightly news and on international news. That's where they're engaged in their brainwashing. But so many people have just tuned out of mainstream media because they know it's deceptive and they're getting their information from fiction, from Hollywood movies, from, 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 from films, from books. And sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. It's a mix. So the real fight, though, is in the fiction. The real fight is going on on shows like The X-Files. And so I'm going to sit back and watch uh, and see what happens. But I hope they try to bring out some of these big topics because NASA admits they're geoengineering the planet with chemtrails. They just call it geoengineering. Uh, the system admits they're adding virus stimulants to vaccines. They admit they're engaged in, in genetic engineering against the people. It's all though admitted dryly in white papers. What I do is cover it in a flamboyant and exciting way because as a watchman on the wall watching enemies invade, I've got to yell and scream and blow trumpets to get people awake and to get people involved. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm not perfect, but I'm real, I'm unscripted, I'm teleprompter free, trying to promote a better, freer world. Well, that's it for this section of the transmission. I'm gonna be back in a moment after the break with Leanne to talk about the new Leonardo DiCaprio movie that deals with someone coming back from the dead and involves a big, mean grizzly bear. So stay with us. I'm gonna continue on Facebook mentions for a moment. What's wrong? You don't like a small group of psychos hijacking your country? Well, become president of the United States and change it from the... Never mind. Three cops were fired at President Kennedy's motorcade in downtown Dallas. President Kennedy has been seriously... Another GOP debate is upon us. When you had the World Trade Center go, people were put into planes that were friends, family, and they were sent back. They knew what was going on. They went home and they wanted to watch their boyfriends on television. Who else would come back like that at the Bushes and the Clintons calling them criminals? And this the Fox. You guys go back to your live feeds. You see, we don't have rights in America. Only the people who are outside of this country have a right. The only right that anybody has is to come live in America, presumably to live off of us if that's what they choose. They they can come live off of us. They can come uh, create war in our country. That's their right. But people in America don't have rights. The first and most important priority of the President of the United States is to protect the safety and security of America. No, it isn't. So much You're disqualified. Done. You have an oath to the Constitution, and the oath to the Constitution says, and the Declaration of Independence says, you are created to protect our freedoms. Right. Not to keep us safe. They didn't want safety. They wouldn't have rebelled against the strongest government in the world if their first priority was safety. Their first priority was liberty. They created a government to protect that. I'm sick of these people. If we want to defend the country, we have to defend against who's are coming in. And Marco is, has more of an allegiance to Chuck Schumer and to the liberals than he does to conservative policy. Do you really think that Republicans have fueled the rise of ISIS? <laughs> Uh, yeah, where's she been? Who is she? The allies of <laughs> ISIS, the, the Islamic rebels against doing? Assad, <laughs> that we created a safe space, we made that space bigger for <laughs> ISIS to grow. Uh, we know what's going on, we know these guys are running ISIS, and when they talk about shutting down freedom of speech, he just repeated the exact same stuff he said in his speech, even talking about how you don't refer to these people as masterminds, he knows precisely what he's saying. These are a bunch of Morlocks, and the American people are a bunch of Eloy. When they talk about serving America, you're on the menu. Join InfoWars January 14th, starting at 7 p.m. Central for another episode of Political Science Theater 3K. I want more candy. I want more video games. Why, why, why? And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best 
formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockout's it. InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these, and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced. And it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. The third and final hour of this December 15th, 2005, Thursday edition. You know, I got a surprise, I don't know, six, eight months ago, a year ago, I don't remember now, Dean, uh, when Dean Hagman, who I've watched on the X-Files and who I'd also uh, seen on The Lone Gunman, and I've talked about that particular pilot episode quite a bit because it's parallels, it's almost exact parallels with 9-11, when uh, Dean Hagman gave me a call and said, hey, uh, I'm in town. Right. right. Well, Al, it's great to see you again, by the way. Yeah, good to see you. Yeah, I, um... For those who don't know, I was an actor on the X-Files for nine seasons, ten years, plus our own spin-off, The Lone Gummin. I'm the one that looked like Garth from Wayne's World. Thank you very much for everyone who's been <laughs> um, Yeah, I had a lot of blonde hair, the horn ring glasses, and the, the rock t-shirts with the Ramones and all that sort of thing. You were like, my favorite character, I have to say. I was always glad whenever the uh, conspiracy theorist guys popped up. That's right. And you know, the, it, it, the writers, like Chris Carter, and, and they were listening to shows like yours and, and Art Bell and stuff to get a sense of how to write for us and how to like do that. So you were major, major influences. Wow, well. I'm flattered. I didn't know that. Yeah, absolutely. They were all keeping the, keeping tabs on everything, uh, which would, made the show so relevant back then. But I like that attention. It's better mm -hmm. than attention from DimeCorp. Yeah, exactly. Though I just heard about that now, that you... Uh, <laughs> You're a bit threatened by these guys. Man, I tell you, these are the guys to be threatened by. Well, you know, this just is a testament to the good work you're doing. I mean, if, if you uh, if you didn't have it, that kind of influence, they would just ignore you completely. It actually just gives me the willies. That type of evil gives me this just, just where does that come from? It's like another universe. It is another, well, and, it, and it's that level of fear on, on those corporate structure parts that just indicate that there's a huge cultural shift coming that uh, I've seen over the last year, you know, since we talked in this documentary that I've been showing, uh, what I've found is that there is something larger going on that is phenomenal, that will, as you said, you know, left, right's an illusion and all that. We, we're somehow having this ability to see past these illusions, to see past these power structures that will just, I think, tear down the walls. Well, it's like, it's like selling icy, frosty lemonades in hell. <laughs> I mean, 10, 11 years ago when I first got started, people were perceptive and receptive but nothing, I mean, it's light years now. Yeah. I mean, there's almost a danger to that, though, because then people are so ready to, uh, you know, I'm wondering two weeks after the London bombing is a government operation, and then mainstream newspapers are saying it. So, and, and, and but, but I'm also, though, seeing the discernment go up. People are also getting very discriminating, very selective. Uh, they're, they're seeing through disinfo operations very quickly, which is uh, very encouraging. It is encouraging, and I think, uh, you know, it's sort of the hundred monkey theory. You know that one? There's a larger collective unconsciousness that we're all keen into. And once that happens, then, you know, they can make all the threats they want. They can do all the sort of power grabs and pass all this legislation that turns it into a police state. I still believe that the larger consciousness, the publicists, will, uh, will break through. Oh, I agree. Let's talk more about that because what did Gandhi say? First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they attack you, then you win. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the movement will win. I just wonder if I can survive the attack. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be right back. Stay with us. Dean Haglin, who again was uh, the star of the X-Files, one of the main stars on the show for nine seasons, ten years, and of course the lone gunman. 
uh, uh, pilot and then one season, which I thought was better than the X-Files, personally. Thank you very much. Yeah, the writers did, too, and, and they wanted to... Uh, you know, bring up a lot more of the um, the less the ghost stories and the uh, the poo monsters that they had in the X Files, and go more into the conspiracy, but with the comedic edge. You know, as a way of getting some of these serious things across, but in a lighthearted tone. You know, Coast to Coast AM, uh, second biggest radio show in the country, it's shifted a lot out of the ghost stories and stuff uh, into more of the new world order stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the writers were trying to take that show in that direction. Uh, in an entertaining fashion, a way of bringing these ideas into the public forum. Is that because that's what the fans and the public wanted, or is that because that's what you guys wanted? I think it was a combination. You know, the the popularity of the gun and had a large uh, conspiracy contingent to it, and so they were going after that fan base, and less from the uh, uh, the shippers and the you know who loved uh, Mulder and who loved Scully kind of thing. Uh, your pilot episode, uh, tell us about that plot. Yeah, absolutely. This was a, a pilot episode um, for The Lone Gunman where the basic plot was the gunman had to stop a plane from flying into the World Trade Center uh, eight months before it actually happened. So uh, when we got the script, it said, you know, plane, World Trade Center, they filmed a, uh, an entire airplane, they had a, a green mat screen, so they put the... Uh, put the shot of the New York skyline in with the plane flying directly at it and uh, just seconds before we get computer control we get it back to the pilots and the pilots can pull the plane up and, and avoid hitting the World Trade Center. Revenant. One who has come back from the dead, like Lazarus of the Bible. I went and saw this movie last night. I thought it was excellent. I'm already a fan of Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't really agree with his politics, but this director did an amazing job. It is truly avant-garde. It was also very disturbing, more than two and a half hours long. I was glad when it was over. It was definitely an experience. And I'm also frustrated by the way history's been projected here in the United States. This is a little bit politically correct, but not too much. Almost all cowboy and Indian westerns, right through from you know John Wayne and Stagecoach up to uh, Dances with Wolves with Kevin Costner, show what happened out west in the 1860s to the 1890s, as if Comanches were the only tribe that existed. From the beginning of settling going on with the Mayflower, there were different diverse tribes, some loving, some warlike, uh, some inventive, uh, some political, or a mix of the two. There were huge wars where uh, the natives would use the French and the British and others off against each other as proxies or the other way around. The biggest Indian Wars, as they were called with the Native Americans, happened between the 1820s and the 1850s. That's when the big deciding wars happened in the Midwest on the Mississippi. And let me tell you, this film is set right around that time, and it gives you a real flavor for what was going on. It wasn't whites against the natives or natives against the whites. It was French and natives working together or against each other. Uh, it absolutely captured what was going on. And the fact that it was barbarous, Conan the Barbarian for real type insanity. And I would love to see cinema. We've got Last of the Mohicans, you know, set in the... 1730s and 40s or so, and, and that's very accurate of what happened. It's you know based on uh, fiction, but it has some real events in it. But there's no other movies that pick up anything from the you know 1600s really up until the 1860s and past that. And that's because newspapers finally began serializing the Indian Wars out west, and and making it you know popular to follow the extermination uh, of the quote engines using the racist term. It wasn't a fun topic. And it wasn't something to read books about for entertainment back when whole cities were being burned and armies of Native Americans mixed in with whites and others would pour down by the hundreds of thousands in some cases and kill tens of thousands of people a day in some cases. I mean, whole states wiped out. It was incredible. And you look at somebody like Andrew Jackson, America's uh, president, who grew up fighting the British, lost his mother and brother to the British, lost a lot of family to the natives, uh, an Indian fighter. 
a guy that was overwhelmed time and time again with people like Davy Crockett and Sam Houston that, that you know, worked under him, and you understand why it was exterminate them, drive them out, round them up, kick them out, because it was a death battle. And I'm not defending what they did or what the natives did. It's just it wasn't like it's 2016 and we're all in a beautiful, glistening city with, you know, Walmart.